Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible, turn it to Revelation chapter 16. We're going to read the entire chapter. Just a little background, though. The In Matthew chapter 24 and Mark 13, the disciples asked Jesus privately, what would be like uh, at your coming and the, the end of the world? And he went on and explained a few things. And there's a group of people called that they call themselves preterists. And you have uh, partial preterists and then you have full preterists. And what they do is they say that everything in Matthew 24 has been fulfilled. Everything. And then there's some that says, well, it was partially fulfilled, but it's not completely done yet. Now, the ones that say that it's everything in Matthew 24 is past and was all fulfilled in 70 AD when the Roman army destroyed the temple, uh, they tend to ignore the book of Revelation, specifically this particular chapter and they have to because you know they they have to say well you know book of revelation was written prior to 70 a.d and then romans came and destroyed jerusalem in 70 a.d so revelations passed that was in the past well let's take a look revelation 16 verse 1 and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which, which worshipped his image. See, there's people that will actually tell you the mark of the beast was 70 AD. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. When in recorded history did every, did the sea become as blood and every living soul in the sea die? When, it, when, when was that recorded in history? Uh, never. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. When was this recorded in history? And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Why are they giving them blood to drink? Because they shed the blood of innocent people, the blood of saints and prophets. That means they killed them. Verse 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You see, Al Gore is right. Global warming is tr coming to true. But it's going to be from God, not from overpopulation. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat. Global warming right? And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. See, these people, they repented not to give God glory and, and of their deeds. 
there's a famous internet preacher running around saying that you got to repent of your unbelief, but here God wanted them to repent of their deeds, but they repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great, of great I'm sorry, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Armageddon. Why would, the, why would the Bible say, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon? Well, the reason they tell you in the Hebrew tongue it's called Armageddon is because the New Testament was written in Greek not Hebrew, like the Hebrew roots people try to lie and tell us. See, that's why it says, into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Because if it was originally written in Hebrew, there'd be no reason to put this and, and tell people in Hebrew tongue it's called Armageddon. You know, it would say, oh, in, in the Greek it's called this, but it doesn't do that. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found." Did every island flee away? Were the mount are the mountains not found? Uh, so, full preterism can't not possibly be true. You see, preterists will only talk to you about Matthew 24. They won't talk to you about the book of Revelation. Verse 21, and we're going to close this out. And there fell upon men a great hail, hail, H-A-I-L, and there fell upon, fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Now, for those of you that don't know it, a talent is about 70 pounds, which is around 30 kilograms. All right, so a talent is, like I said, about 70 pounds or about 30 kilograms. That is a heavy piece of hail. And you got to figure a piece of hail's got to be traveling at at least 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, let's see, how fast is that traveling? So that um, you got to figure at least 90 miles an hour. A 70 pound piece of ice traveling at 90 miles an hour or a 30 kilogram uh, piece of ice traveling at about 150 kilometers an hour. Uh, if that hits you in the head, it's going to take your head off your shoulders. I mean, let's face it. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. 
for the plague thereof was exceeding great. You know, uh, I did a Bible study on the plagues of Egypt. And the plagues in Revelation are, have a lot of similarities to the plagues in Egypt. They had hail that fell upon Egypt. And uh, it was hail mingled with fire. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look. It's to be found in Exodus chapter 9, starting in verse 22. I'm just going to breeze through this. Exodus 9:22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire, the fire ran upon, I'm sorry, ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Now that doesn't sound too good, does it? All right, so let's take a look in Revelation chapter 8, starting in verse 5. 5 through 8. And this is kind of a parallel of what we just read. This is why, you know, when people tell you that Revelation's in chronological order. Chronological means time. It, it's just, it's not true. All right, Revelation 8 and verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. Hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Now, I wonder, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. I, I, you know, I wonder, could that be a meteorite made of iron that's on fire burning, and it hits the sea, and then just totally destroys everything. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, you see how Revelation... Revelation is an interesting book because it draws all of its symbolism from the rest of the Bible, mostly the Old Testament. So if you've never read the Old Testament, the book of Revelation will have very little meaning to you. But uh, it draws... I mean, when you look at the plagues upon the earth in Revelation, it closely mimics the uh, plagues of the book of Revelation. All right, so this is the end of this particular Bible study. Um, and uh, keep tuned. We've still got another two chapters in Revelation to finish, and then we'll conclude the cup of the wrath of the Lord. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.